Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem 3 from IMO 1961. So the problem is asking us to solve this equation. Um, cosine n of x minus sine n of x equals 1. So at this point you, want, you may want to pause the video, think about the problem, and then come back and see how I solve the problem. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing that I do is, since n is a positive integer, I'm going to start with different values of n and then see what happens. So if n is 1, we're going to get cosine of x minus sine of x equals 1. And there's a standard way of solving this one. Either you solve for cosine, you plug in into the sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, or this is a better method to use. So here's an, another method to use. Um, you could write this one down as a, using a angle sum or angle difference formula. So let me tell you how we can do that. If you look at sine of uh, alpha plus beta, we know the formula for this one. This is sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. So I would like to write this down cosine of x minus sine of y uh, sine of x as uh, I want to be able to write it down something like this so I need the coefficients to be cosine and sine of an angle but of course the coefficients are 1 and negative 1 1 and negative 1 cannot be cosine and sine of any angle I have to make sure that their squares add up to 1 so if I uh, factor root 2 I will get 1 over root 2 cosine of x minus 1 over root 2 sine of x and this can be written as root 2 if you if you look at this look at these numbers pi 1 over root 2 is sine of pi over 4 and uh, it's also equal to cosine of pi over 4 so this would be sine of pi over 4 minus x so that would give you so that would give you sine of pi over 4 which is 1 over root 2 cosine of x minus cosine of pi over 4 which is 1 over root 2 times sine of x so this is the equality that we get now from here i know root 2 sine of pi over 4 minus x is equal to 1 which tells me sine of pi over 4 minus x is equal to 1 over root 2 but 1 over root 2 is sine of pi over 4 now we'll have to find the angles. If you have two angles that have the same sign, either they differ by 2 pi, or if you do the reflection about the y-axis, we get another angle. So this angle and this angle have the same sign. And they add up to pi. This one is theta, this one is pi minus theta. So what does that mean? It means pi over 4 minus x is equal to 2 pi k plus pi over 4 or 2 pi k plus 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4 is the other angle in the second quadrant with the same sign. So the pi over 4 cancels here and this would become pi over 2. So that gives you x equals negative 2 pi k, k is an integer, and then negative 2 pi k minus pi over 2. So, bottom line is this. For this case, n equals 1, we get x equals 2 pi k, negative 2 to 2 pi k and 2 pi k are the same, and then 2 pi k plus pi over 4. And of course, k is an integer. So this is the case when n is 1. Okay, so now let's look at n equals 2 and see what we get. For n equals 2, we'll get x cosine squared minus sine squared equals 1. Now, one thing that we notice is that cosine squared cannot be more than 1. So if you look at this, this is basically saying that cosine squared is equal to 1 plus sine squared. So when does that happen? This happens if and only if sine of x is 0. Why? Because cosine of x, uh, cosine x squared cannot be more than 1. So sine of x must be 0. And if sine of x is 0, cosine of x is plus minus 1. So what does that tell us? That tells us that x is pi k. So the second set of solutions that we get is n equals 2, x equals pi k, and of course k is an integer.
So this is the second set of solutions. Now let's look at n equals 3 and see if we can generalize that after this. That would give us cosine cubed minus sine cubed equals 1. Now, we know that cosine and sine are between 1 and negative 1. So that tells us that cosine cubed is definitely not more than cosine squared. And the reason for this is that if I move everything to the same side, I will get cosine squared times 1 minus cosine. Both of these two quantities are greater than or equal to 0. Same thing for sine cubed. Negative sine cubed is less than or equal to sine squared. And that's the same thing as 0 less than or equal to sine squared times 1 plus sine of x. And if you add up these two inequalities, you would get cosine cubed minus sine cubed is less than or equal to 1. But we do have equality, which means the equality would have to happen on the right. So let's now generalize this idea for any n. So we would be able to get to the solution. Uh, okay, so suppose n is at least 3. So what do we have? We have cosine to the power of n is less than or equal to cosine squared. And the reason is if I move everything to the same side, I will get cosine squared times 1 minus cosine to the power of n minus 2 of x greater than or equal to 0, which holds because uh, cosine of x in absolute value is less than or equal to 1. So cosine to the power of n minus 2 of x is between negative 1 and 1, which means 1 minus that is greater than or equal to 0, and cosine squared is, of course, greater than or equal to 0. Similarly, negative sine to the power of n is also less than or equal to sine squared, which is to say, let's justify this, and the justification is if I factor cosine to the power of uh, sine squared, I would get 1 plus sine to the power of n minus 2 of x, and again, the same reason, because sine in absolute value is less than or equal to 1. So sine cannot exceed uh, 1, and it, it's not less than negative 1. Since it is not less than negative 1, this quantity is non-negative. So in order to the, for the equality to happen, so we would get cosine to the power of n minus sine to the power of n less than or equal to 1. In order for the equality to happen, so equality holds if and only if we have equality for both inequalities. What does that mean? It means cosine squared times 1 minus cosine to the power of n minus 2 is 0 and sine squared times 1 plus just the second expression sine to the power of n minus 2 is 0. Let's now take care of each one of these equations. Okay, so if we look at the first one, there's two possibilities. Either cosine squared is 0. So when is cosine squared times 1 minus cosine to the power of n minus 2, 0? This happens if cosine is 0 or, so either cosine is 0 or cosine is 1. If cosine is 1, 1 minus cosine to the power of n minus 2 is also 0. Or it could also be that cosine is negative 1. But if cosine is negative 1, then you would need n to be even. So let's look at each case and see what happens. So case 1 is if cosine of x is 0. If cosine of x is 0, then sine of x would be plus or minus 1. Those are the only possibilities for sine. Now we'll plug it into the second equation. So what we, get, what we would get is plus or minus 1 squared times 1 plus uh, plus or minus 1 to the power of n minus 2 would have to be 0. Because recall that we have to have both of the equations to hold at the same time. Now what does that tell us? That tells us that n must be, e, must be odd. Then 
you would have negative 1 to the power of n minus 2, which is negative 1. So n must be odd. In this case, n must be odd and sine must be negative 1. In that case, we will have cosine equals 0 automatically. Okay, so what does this give us? It gives us n is odd um, and it's also greater than or equal to 3. So we took care of the case when when n was 1 or 2. And x is 2 pi k. So we have sine is negative 1. So it's 2 pi k minus pi over 2. And of course, k is an integer. So this is the other set of solutions. Now, the second case is if we'll go back and look at what we got for the first equation. So the second case is when, um, when cosine of x is equal to 1. So if cosine of x is equal to 1, then sine of x is automatically going to be 0. So these are um, always going to happen, always going to give us solutions. So if cosine of x is equal to 1, that would give us x equals 2 pi k, and k is an integer. So these are all possible solutions. And finally, the last case is when cosine x is negative 1 and n is I believe even. So cosine of x is negative 1 that tells us sine of x is equal to 0 again automatically satisfies the second equation because the second equation had a factor of sine squared. So this would be n is even and x is 2 pi k plus pi because you need cosine to be negative 1 and k is an integer. Okay, so just to summarize, these are the possibilities. n equals 1, x equals, so we got this separately. n equals 1, and remember that this actually cannot be done for n equals 1. n equals 1 and x is 2 pi k or 2 pi k plus pi over 2 and k is an integer so this is one possibility the other possibility is if n is 2 we got that again separately uh, this might actually match the n greater than equal to 3 n equals 2 x equals pi k k is an integer next one is if n is greater than equal to 3 so case one is n greater than equal to three is odd, and x is so that was like case one, uh, two pi k minus pi over two, k is an integer. The next case is x is two pi k, so n is greater than equal to three and x is 2 pi k. That's the case when cosine is 1 and sine is 0. n could be anything. And finally, the last case is if n is even, n greater than or equal to 0, 3 is even. And x is 2 pi k plus pi. And as usual, k is an integer. So these are all possible cases. The case when n is even, it could also be any multiple of pi because we do have even multiples of pi here and odd multiples of pi here, so you could combine those. And in fact, you could kind of maybe eliminate this one and just write down n greater than or equal to 2, but it doesn't matter really significantly. So that brings me to the end of this video. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out the rest of the videos on my channel where I uh, spend time going over different problem solving strategies and I will see you in the next video.